Hi everyone, Simon here and welcome to the Steam Next Fest run through of 20 story rich narrative or point and click adventures that I downloaded demos of and had a little rummage around on. Some of these demos were quite short, some of them broke on me, but largely almost all of them kept me interested enough to keep them on my wish list. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'll kick off with The Many Pieces of Mr. Koo, which when I saw the trailer a little while ago, I thought, well, that's a nice animated trailer. I wonder what the gameplay will look like. Nope, it is the gameplay. This is a like a 1920s to 1940s styled cartoon animation point and click adventure. So think Cuphead-ish, but as a point and click. You play as Mr. Koo, which in the kind of outro video that they show you in the demo implies that he can be like chopped into pieces and go off and do different things separately. But I think that's just one part of a totally psychedelic and slightly off the wall cartoon of the likes of which you'd get probably like you wouldn't get the psychedelic scene from Dumbo these days, would you? But you did back then. <laughs> this feels like a game in that style. The point and click adventuring is interesting because quite a lot of it revolves around spotting gaps in animation and then hitting something whilst they're going off and doing something. So think of, and I'll think of a great example, Broken Sword, the goat puzzle. When the goat was walking back, you'd go and do a second click and go again. A lot of the puzzles seem to be designed around that mechanic, but much better um, signalled. So like uh, you've got a bigger gap to get in with, basically. I loved this puzzle. Uh, it was really intriguing off the wall. You didn't know what was coming next, but it felt like a really immersive, smooth and beautiful cartoon that I was manipulating and controlling really fascinating. This will be a day one for me. The many pieces of Mr. Koo. Totally Shifting Gears is Unwording, which is a word puzzle game crossed with a light point and click adventure through the eyes of someone who is severely depressed. So you'll be walking around the world in their general day-to-day -day life and every time they see something it will say things like wake up, check phone or a cool car or something like that and then every time you click on something it transforms into a word game where though that phrase turns into word blocks a bit like the blocks that you'd pick up as a kid with loads of different letters on and what you do is you rotate those puzzle blocks around to form a very depressed version of what you've just seen so wake up becomes i give up um a, a cool car i think becomes i am poor but you're given real range in to get lost and get stuck. Thankfully, there are hint blocks that you can put in, but the actual hint blocks and the blocks turning green when you put something in the right place didn't necessarily work very often for me, even though I was on the right track for things. So there's definitely some work to be done, and I did feel that the game was quite sluggish to move around in, but I really like the concept of this, and so it's staying on my wish list, and I hope that there's just, as with most demos, it's a rough diamond of something that they're working towards and that's a really good example of that love the concept just needs a bit of polish equally requiring a bit of polish is toilet chronicles <laughs> i can't believe i downloaded this demo <laughs> so the idea is that you're stuck in a toilet <laughs> and you need to try and get out but every kind of weird things keep happening this game had a specific toilet with seven endings in it oh my god <laughs> and the idea was that um like, if you broke the demo, a tentacle would come out from Cthulhu and kill you. Then there's a different way how you could exit out of the toilet normally. And there's lots of, like, layers of almost Stanley Parable-esque-ness to this game, where you're trying to either break it or go down different actions and paths, depending on what happens with you and the person in the stall next to you, making lots of different outcomes. I found the premise absolutely hilarious and oddball, but in a good way. The fact that it was a small contained area with loads of different endings meant that you wanted to poke and prod everything to see what would happen. I did run into quite a few glitches, though, um, around things even not happening or things getting stuck uh, or items that I could pick up in previous run throughs then not being pick up a ball elsewhere and it still needed me to progress through the story. So definitely some polish needing happening. I'm also confused if it's just one giant game in one toilet or do you like escape an ending in one toilet and end up in another one? Genuinely intrigued. <laughs> so yeah, Toilet Chronicles stayed on my wish list. I had a ball. Another really cool concept that I enjoyed was Outcore Desktop Adventure. But part of it, not all of it. 
The idea is that you have this character who is trapped inside your computer and bits of her identity are spattered around your computer. So apologies for seeing like a really cluttered desktop. I didn't know that it was going to be doing all of this, but it's like dropping bits of her files in your My Docs and then you have to go around and find it and then like drag it onto her and then she like gains new powers and starts whizzing around your desktop. Loved all of that. It felt like a weird alternative reality where I had like a friendly virus in my computer. Um, and then the fact that it opens up paint and it's like, hey, draw a key for me and all of that kind of stuff. Really inventive and really interesting. Then all of a sudden it switched gears and turned itself into a quite slightly clumsy 2D platformer. And I didn't enjoy though that element of this game nearly as much as anything else that it did outside of the 2D platforming elements. So more desktop adventuring for me rather than actual 2D adventuring would be make Outcore be a must-buy. At the moment, it's staying on my wish list, but more for the weird alternative world bits than anything else. Talking of flipping between two ideas on polar opposites, we have Goodbye World. The idea of this is to follow two girls who are trying to become indie developers, but their games aren't selling, and so they're trying to get by and not give up hope. But it's turning their passion into real frustration because they aren't making it or being able to make a living through their games. Each chapter starts off with the character that you control picking up what is blatantly a Game Boy, <laughs> but it's an off-brand one, and you playing a level of a game that either they've bought or played or that they're creating. It didn't quite say in the demo. Um, so you kind of have this Game Boy 2D adventure level, and then you have an exposition part of story, and then you move to a new chapter where your game is getting progressively harder, but so is the actual world that's going on around you and like the story progressing. I believe this story is totally linear, but I really like the art style, the idea and the mood that it gave. And I think it's an interesting insight into the creative process, which I'm always intrigued in. So for this, and for me, it's staying on my wish list. Your mileage might vary a little bit, though, because of its linear design. Very much non-linear though, Felt Repeller Fella, which is a point-and-click adventure, again made to look out like a, f a certain styled cartoon. I was getting South Parky type vibes. And the idea with this game is that you are trying to kill various different uh, marks in some kind of big espionage cartoon, but it's highly adult, uh, lots of swearing, lots of my type of humour where everyone's just pissed off with this world and would rather just shoot some people and get <laughs> have a quieter life. <laughs> I feel like I'm turning into the movie Falling Down in my middle age. And this game conveys that idea quite well. <laughs> and yeah, it was just fluid and interesting that you had lots of different ways to get around and do different things and lots of choices that you could make as to how dialogue options went with the fully voice acted and superbly voice acted cast, I must admit, alongside being able to choose different ways ways of solving things, which I'm assuming would have knock-on effects as you go on throughout the game. Fantastic. Really sold on this concept. This will be a day one for me as well. Now, I'm not a huge fan of visual novels, but I like it when a visual novel does something slightly different and adds in a different gameplay element to the mix. And that's how I feel Kaiju, the Kaiju dating sim, went. So this is a kaiju dating simulator, but it's all about choices and it's almost like a personality quiz in a way. So you are a certain kaiju called Kaichu, and you get to date a variety of different kaijus. So you pick the one that you get at the beginning of the demo, and then you go on several dates, going to different monuments that spawn off different questions. And depending on how you kind of get with the personality of the kaiju, you have three different options of how you answer. So like a excellent answer, a kind of middling one, and a dislike answer. And depending on how you do, it's how much carnage and destruction you cause to that <laughs> monument that's behind you. And then as you progress, you'll get more and more in tune with that kaiju. So you're trying to date and romance them. The idea being that you can then fall in love and kiss and like cause destruction and carnage everywhere and then your relationship continues to progress. It's all told through news anchor links which are trying to emulate, I swear, something like RuPaul's Drag Race um, with their levels of sass and silliness. But yeah, this is good camp, stupid fun. Really enjoyed it. Very light-hearted, but also um, quite 
fun to play as well because you're constantly being asked for choices that then determine your outcomes. Whereas sometimes the reason why I turn off from anything that's a visual novel is because you go long passages of time without any kind of interaction. This was like every third screen. Moving on to something more traditionally point and click now, we have Old Skies. Old Skies is very traditional point and click, reminded me very much of flashback actually in the way how the graphics were done because it feels almost like it's motion capture-y fluid, like in terms of its fluidity, but it's blatantly not. It also features a really interesting time travel story. So the idea of this is that you're going backwards in time or to different points in time, almost like a time traveling tourism industry where you're taking people to revisit parts of their life or something like that. But the person that you're escorting decides to escape and cause all kinds of drama and fun. So it sets up the premise really, really well in the demo, had me very intrigued. The voice acting is fantastic. The graphics look great. Really liked the music as well. And I also really liked the way how it was very simple to understand what you could and couldn't pick up in this game and how to manage your inventory, which is something that still to this day quite a lot of point and click adventures could learn an awful lot from. So yeah, it's very odd to just kind of go, everything worked in this demo and that being like a huge thing. But so many of these demos or games had bugs and issues. This just worked intuitively and like a, just an easy breeze. And I had great fun playing Old Skies and I'll be definitely coming back to play this and buy it later. Continuing on with point and clicks, we have monorail stories. And this felt much more like a slice of life style point and click adventure. And I could see people's mileage varying greatly on this. The idea is that you're controlling various different people going to and from cities on a monorail. And so what you do with one character then slightly impacts the timeline of the next character that you talk to. But in the demo, it's a very binary option that you're given. And what I'd be interested to know further down the line is just how intertwined all of these different timelines are because you get to build relationships with the other people that are on the monorail as you go back and forth the more you talk to them it starts to give them hearts for example so do they open up more conversation later on do they do more things or is it just going to be very binary yes and no back and forth decisions and actually it's a very linear path seen through the prism of pretending to be quite divergent However, that being said, did enjoy the voice acting, did enjoy the graphics. I enjoy the fact that it's also all set in one location as well so far, um, so that you can really just focus in on the characters and how that all works. It does feel like it needs a run button though, to make uh, going back and forth across these very long trains to get to various different people a little bit less cumbersome. We're staying with point and clicks and this one is Sanya. Now I downloaded this purely because there was a giant dog <laughs> reveal um, that was in the demo itself and it looked like it was going to be a wholesome game but actually it was quite sad. So you're playing as this very poor child in a poor family where their parents are constantly working and he's been shipped between parents and grandmother for being looked after and so it kind of starts off at the very beginning of the game and it's a quite a short demo but you get to see the relationship with your mum the nice relaxing indie acoustic guitar music tinkling away in the background and the concepts of being able to do uh, rhythm based or timing based quick time events to perform various different tasks the demo ends at the point where you discover your little puppy dog and I'm assuming you're going to go on nice cute adventures together but the whole thing is designed to be like a child in the 90s trying to explore and navigate their early teenage life because the whole thing is around oh look you've got the key to your the flat you're now your own person well done you um so yeah I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where that goes um because the story writing was quite strong in a wholesome way. So yeah, Sanya, coming soon. Stays on my wish list. Turning our attentions more to walking simulators now, we have the Silent Swan. And this game looks absolutely huge and it carries its atmosphere with every kind of colour palette and hue that goes on around it. It looks interesting. It's very slow. 
but it's slow on purpose because it's trying to build up and ratchet up atmosphere and tension because your wife has gone missing for the last 17 years due to a calamity that happened when you went to bed one night and she went on a walk. So you've been separated ever since. And you have this excellent English voiceover of the character that you control trying to make his way back to his wife again. And she's leaving little letters, origami into swans, for you to be able to try and see where she's got to next. Love the premise, love the world around it and the atmosphere it builds up. And a big shout out for, they've got this thing called a, cu- a, a cusicle, I think it was called, or a quicksicle. It's a bike, but it's got two front wheels and one rear. So it's like a reverse tricycle. And you use that to try and get faster than what you can if you walk or run. And it's just as well because most of that demo was wandering along smashed up roads trying to pick your way through the debris. So it worked a treat. I'm intrigued to see just exactly what else changes or are you constantly just walking forward and that's okay so long as that atmosphere and tension can continue to be sustained over a long period of time but yeah wetted my whistle did the silent white swan um and i didn't expect it to when i first set out at the very beginning of that demo and it got better and better as it progressed so hmm, stays on my wish list and a thumbs up from me It's also a massive thumbs up for me from End of Lines, which was one of the biggest surprises out of this whole collection of story rich games that I was playing. Uh, You play as a shifting set of people, depending on your choices, as you move as a tribe who have been left kind of nomadic in a post global warming apocalyptic world. So there's barely any water left. Most towns have disintegrated into chaos. So you're kind of just fending for yourselves now as we're kind of wandering towards the end. But you don't want it to be the end because you're looking after your son or the youngest person called Sam in the tribe um, who starts off. The people that you start off with are the couple who look after the son. But depending on how you play, it doesn't necessarily stay that way. Everything in this game is a balancing act. So you fall under three large areas of personality depending on the choices you make through your dialogue so you can either be power hungry and aggressive and militant or you could be hugely sociable and try and go for like the social route of things but therefore you'll be challenged because you'll be last in the chain for everything and therefore struggling with less resources or you can try and be a little bit in the middle ground and think about efficiency over emotions How you play depends on your personality traits and where you want to go with it, but you also need to balance how much resource that you can find from water versus the amount of people in your tribe. So you can kind of end up basically inviting too many people into your tribe or not having enough resources and people die off or leave because they're so hungry and starving or they've lost faith in you. Looks absolutely fascinating. Loved this, loved the art style, loved the music. This went from a that looks intriguing to a must have for me. And I was really intrigued and impressed. So Ender Lines stays on my wish list and probably a day one. Another game that really intrigued me of its premise is We Stay Behind. And the idea of this is that there's a comet that's going to smash into this like idyllic countryside village uh, and wipe it off the face of the earth. But interestingly, the inhabitants have decided to stay behind and go out with a bang with it. So you play as a reporter that's travelled to the village to find out why. This game reminds me of Lake, and it's because driving is from place to place is going to be a key part of the game. So you're driving around the uh, maps themselves, trying to uh, get from place to place. But then you're also having interesting conversations with people, depending on what it is that you say and don't say, will change the dialogue options as you go through. And I'm assuming potentially the outcomes of the game as a whole. Um, My issue with this so far was that it was quite glitchy. Uh, I ran into a lot of different graphical bug problems and the game, uh, the demo, sorry, constantly crashed. So apologies that you've only got slight bits of gameplay footage here. I couldn't play very much of it myself, but I'm still sold on the premise and the concept. And I will be keeping this one on my wish list because I'm suitably intrigued. Moving from post-apocalyptic to 
bit more wholesome, I think, is Wayward Strand. And in this game, you play as a child who is uh, the mother of a nurse who works on an airship hospital that is tethered to the world of a giant strand, I'm assuming. And the idea of this is that you wander around looking after the different patients just by talking to them. But the more you talk to them, the more you start to find out more about A, their lives, but B, the hospital's lives in its previous guise. And it implies that there's going to be lots of interesting mysteries kind of unvolving or evolving over the course of this game. I found it really cute and wholesome to play. Uh, there were some issues in the demo about the voice acting actually triggering. So there were bits of it working and bits of it not. But it felt like I was moving around a comic book in a way because of the way how it's framed and how you kind of move and it zooms out and then you pick like what room you're going to go to next. And depending on where you was going at the time of day, and I'm not sure if this is an actual real mechanic or not, but it felt like it. If you went to certain rooms in certain times of the day when the doctors were in giving them like their checkup, you would stand at the door and listen into their conversations rather than go in and interrupt. And then you would hear different things and gain different knowledge depending on if you visited them later and just had a different conversation with them. So I'm not sure how organic that is, but it felt organic to me. And because you're given a watch and a timer at the beginning of the demo to kind of go, you need this to look, watch out for the time and remember how time flies in this hospital. I was like, hmm, I wonder. So this was giving me a little bit of Gregory Horror Show vibes in making sure that you had to time things against the clock so that and you kind of watch people's movements, that type of stuff. So yeah, really intrigued, found it wholesome and nice and cute. Won't be for everyone, but mm, suited me, definitely. Stays on the wish list. Talking of staying on my wish list, so is Extra Coin. This is an interesting game where you play as a character whose grandpa dies, spoilers, at the beginning of the <laughs> of the demo. Um, but he was the last remaining family member alongside you who had chosen not to go to the arcade, which is a virtual reality world to basically leave behind the fact that we've destroyed the planet and it's in a complete and utter shit state. <laughs> now her family has already kind of moved on and they get they begrudge the fact that she didn't go with her and so your character feels guilt tripped in a way to go and find out and try and reconnect with their family by going into the arcade however once she's in the arcade things aren't necessarily quite what they seem and that's pretty much where the demo ends it's quite short and sweet but does a great job of conveying a the excellent graphics b the superb voice acting of a fully voice acted cast uh, and three the fact that there's going to be at least one decent minigame in here that can be played as multiplayer through the arcade mode section. And this was like a cool racquetball style game uh, with lots of power-ups and special moves. I did find it a bit tricky to control, but again, early demo days. Really enjoyed the concept of this. Quite intrigued to see where it goes um, because there's a hint of malice and evilness here, but also like a liberation story going on at the same time. So we'll see where it pans in the future. But Extra Coin definitely stays on my wish list. Good story. Talking of mixing things up, Brock the Investigator mixes a point and click adventure up with a beat em up. <laughs> oh, yes. And you know what? It absolutely works. In this game, you play as Brock the Investigator, surprise, um, who's trying to solve various different crimes from their dwellings uh, but they're also upset and traumatized because they've lost their wife uh, through mysterious circumstances so the game flips from being in point and click mode for you to then press a button and flip into action mode which then turns it into like streets of rage and he's able to pull off all kinds of combos and different bits and bobs there but you can also use it on the environment so that means that he can jump over things as opposed to just kind of getting up against a wall and being like i can't do stuff or there's options where you can if you're trapped in a, a door and the door's slightly compromised switch to action mode and smash the thing down it just brought in a sense of fresh air to what can often be like stale puzzle solving elements where you're just trapped by stupid constraints and Brock just smashes his way out of it. So, yeah, I had good fun. Definitely for the more mature audiences, though, due to the subject matter and the language that's in the game. 
Next up is a game called Halley's Dream, which I downloaded mainly because it had a dog that you could play as. And you do play as a dog, but sadly that's the best thing I can say about the game. Unfortunately, Halley's Dream really didn't click with me at all. It seemed to have become an elongated fetch quest of wandering around, collecting something, bringing it back somewhere, doing the same, doing the same, doing the same. And then when it started to add in additional mechanics, they either weren't triggering properly or didn't make much sense. That combined with some harsh graphics, some awkward controls, some very slow running, but also the fact that your controls are part controller and part keyboard, and the uh, very little text that was there didn't make proper sentences, I really struggled to get engaged in any way, shape or form with Halley's Dream, and so sadly I have removed it from my wish list. The next game I've also removed from my wishlist, but it's purely because there's no English translation for the game coming anytime soon, and it's called Sanfu. This looks like a throwback to the mid-1990s when Japan did quite a lot of mysterious investigation point-and-click adventures, and this is following that trend, but it's just currently all in an Asian language, and there's no English translation yet, and because it is so story-rich, I was no idea what was going on but from what i could see from the demo he was wandering around some beautiful streets in japan and picking up various cds uh, or cassettes popping them into tvs and watching some proper weird shit going on on telly <laughs> so it sounds like a cool concept i just had no clue what was going on so for the time being it's uninstalled but it worked perfectly fine and it looked quite funky uh, as i was playing it the penultimate entry on this list is called Cats and Other Lives. And with Cats and the Other Lives, you play as a cat watching the destruction of a family, I guess is the best way to describe this. It's a family who are very well to do. They all seem to be really stuck up and they've all got their own issues and problems. And you play as the cat wandering around, eavesdropping on various different conversations as they go. I found this a really fascinating concept, especially because it kicks off right at the very beginning with your owner dying and you attending its funeral, listening into lots and lots of different conversations as it was going on and around. You could also interact with various different uh, members of the family, but also go and chase mice and crows, uh, tap with water, all of that kind of stuff, wandering around. And yeah, it just seemed like a really unique premise. There's a couple of technical issues with this game though, and it was mainly around as you run back and forth, it was triggering too much text from all of the bystanders, so it didn't know quite what conversation I should be listening into, and it would speed through things before I could read them, and then it would run off screen, and then it would kind of not trigger again or not start again, and so I was just running into some text-based bugs with that. But the concept itself, intriguing and sound, and I'm in I would like to see where this would go in the future, so absolutely staying on my wish list. The final game is Jerry Wanker and the Quest to Get Laid. <laughs> now, I downloaded this because I am a fan of the Leisure Suit Larry games, because it just appeals to my I've not grown up yet smutty teenage humour that pops out occasionally. And so, yeah, Jerry Wanker absolutely follows that kind of view. It has some weird ideas, though, on how a point-and-click adventure should work. So I think this is going to be an exercise in frustration and comedy at the same time if this release is in its current state. Really difficult to see exactly where and what you can and can't interact with and click with. And what it didn't explain to me until I stumbled across it is that your inventory can't combine objects. You have to constantly go to a table to then combine objects and then you take that object away and put it back in your inventory again. And it seems like a really needless step in order to do something. The idea behind this is that you're supposed to be like combining things with tape or glue and bits and bobs like that. And if that concept is expanded beyond the part of the demo that I played, then great, it makes more sense. But at the moment, it just felt exceptionally clunky. However, I did like the art style. I did like the music, which was suitably 70s porno. And also, I really like the smutty, stupid uh, college humour that goes on throughout this entire game. So staying on my wish list, but I think it's going to be one of those where I'm like, oh, you've done some weird things that don't really make sense to me personally as a gamer. We'll see how we go. So yeah, that's it. The story-rich narrative and point-and-click adventure.
run through hope that was informative if you've got any games that you kind of went ooh, leave this down below a comment so that i can see what you're interested or not interested in the vast majority of these i have to say have stayed on my wish list which i wasn't expecting so yeah expensive times for me take care happy gaming and see you again soon higher plane games is part of the higher plane network a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.